Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, and the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, and the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for the Spirit of light who is shown. said amen, amen. You may, be, may be seated let's pray heavenly father we thank you and praise you for this day that you've given us a beautiful day here in the northern nick we anticipate what you're going to do through your holy spirit in our hearts today we pray for nikki and chip as they bring the gospel to us through music we pray for the evening service and for the uh, services throughout the week as kenny brings us the messages that you've laid upon his heart we pray lord that we'll leave this sanctuary each day walking closer to you for we pray these things in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen it is good to be back amen and good to be in the house of the lord this morning how many are looking for a blessing if your hand ain't up, I'm going to be praying for you, that you find one anyway, amen. <laughs> well, we're excited to be back, and we are uh, excited to be praising the Lord every time we get the opportunity to. And I tell you, seven days a week, how many, how many hours in a day? 24 hours in a day, thank you. Not enough, not enough to keep praising him, amen. We ought to be doing that all the time. And so we try to, and we're going to try to bring a little bit of that to you today, amen. Yes. The pastor said we were eating right after we finished playing. Right? That does not mean the first song. Well, how about this one? No. <laughs> okay, thank y'all for coming. We'll see, I always tease about eating because I just love to eat. You know, I've lost 85 pounds since I had my little heart issue. It's the hardest thing I've ever done is give up some of that food that, that I like. But I really cheated last night. They tried to set me up last night. Went and ordered the crab cake meal because I just love me some good old fried cap crab cakes. They ordered me an extra meal, which gave me four. Then Anthony gave me his. So I had like five crab cakes to eat. I didn't make it through all of them. And I'll tell you what, when I'd roll over on my stomach last night, I felt like one of them weeble wobbles. I was just rolling like a ball was under my belly. But it was so good. I got one to eat on the way home. <laughs> All right, I guess we better play some music, huh? Good time. We're just going to get right to it. You guys know the words of any of our songs. Sing along with us. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. Stay in your 
excited right now. Amen. I won't pull it out of you, but if we get ahead of you praising the Lord, you just catch up, all right? Well, I was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when I saw that hush come running for to carry my mother away with the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better on the way, tin and sky, Lord, in the sky. Now, I know that most of us may not be ready to go right now, but you have to be ready to go, if you know what I mean. Amen? We're going to introduce you to Jesus today, and if you don't already know him, you can know him now. Let's all go down to the river There's a man who's walking on the water Come along with me For I want to see this man coming on the water Well, Jesus is the man at the river Yeah, he's washing people's sins away He can save your soul if you give him control So get ready for that judgment day Still got in the bad times. 
is still God in the night. Yes, God of the day is still God in the This is our traveling song. Y'all wave at somebody. I struggled with old Satan Smith. My life would never change. With a broken heart, a sinker dark, I called on Jesus' name. Well, I must confess my soul's at rest. Satan better heed this warning. God said it's done, the victory's won. Joy's gonna come in the morning. Hallelujah, I hear the voice of the Lord. Joy's gonna come in the morning. The sun's gonna shine, it's just about time. Joy's gonna come in the morning. The devil has lost his battle. He can't hold back the dawning. We've been laying down for the night, but joy's gonna come in the Darkness seemed so long You held on to the power you knew And it has made you strong No stopping now by faith somehow See the light adorning That eastern sky by the Joy's gonna come in the morning Hallelujah, I hear the voice of the Lord Joy's gonna come in the morning The sun's gonna shine, it's just about time Joy's gonna come in the morning this battle, we can't hold back the dawning. We've been laying down for the night, but joy's gonna come in the morning. Hallelujah, I hear the voice of the Lord. Joy's gonna come in the morning. The sun's gonna shine, it's just about time. Joy's gonna come in the morning. The devil has lost this battle, we can't hold back the dawning. We've been Hey, guess what, y'all? It's morning, so joy is here. And I can tell that by the smiles on y'all's faces. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Go, 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 go. That sounded refreshing, didn't it? Woo. I had to get me some of that water. I was expecting somebody a little more professional than that, weren't you? <laughs> we tried that professional thing one time. It didn't work out. No. You just get Chip and Nicky. Chip and Nicky, that's it. Or Nip and Chicky or Chicken Nippy, whatever you want to call us. It, <laughs> we've been called it all, I'm telling you. <laughs> all right. One of the pastors says, why don't y'all change y'all's name to something a little easier to say for the pastors? I'm like, well, got to be known for something. If you can't get my name right, that's okay. Most of my life It's not always pleasant And I haven't yet arrived And no, I'm not perfect But I'm striving to be And if I know my Lord He won't 
give up on me And if I fall, I'll get back up again Well, I've made up my mind I'm gonna win God knows my heart and where I am with Him So if I fall, I'll get back up They say it's hard to stumble when you're down on your knees. But that's when I'm close to heaven and my spirit gets set free. So if I have to crawl all the way to the cross, one drop of blood will cover me. If I fall, I'll get back up again Yeah, if I fall, I'll get back up again Yeah, I've made up my mind I'm gonna win God knows my heart and where I am with Him So if I so good and faithful to pick us up and yes. to put us back on the narrow path and to help us through everything we have going on. How many believe he's in this room today? Yes. He's right here. Yes. The spirit is in this room. Amen. He's with us everywhere we go. You know, we think sometimes that, that he's not there and I assure you he's not gone anywhere because we're the ones that move. We're the ones that move. He's in front of us, behind us, beside us. He's seeing us through. And once so long ago, I had uh, been sitting out on the porch in Tennessee. We've got a beautiful viewer up on the top of a mountain. And uh, <clears throat> it was a beautiful view. And I saw the neighbors come out. And it was an elderly man and a woman came out with, I guess, their grandson. I don't, a little, little teeny thing. And another friend. And as they were walking by, I waved. And they were just, that little kid was just you know, trying to keep up, <laughs> how their legs are a little bit shorter and they have to just keep up. But they were holding on to them, but granddad had to go back for something in the house. And that little kid was turning and like dragging thin because he wanted to know where was granddad going. And uh, the grandmother kept saying, he's coming, he's coming, he'll be there, he's coming. You know, and he just kept looking back. Well, granddad made it back and the little kid was just excited and they kept on going. And the Lord spoke to my heart right then. He said, I want you to be like that little kid. I want you to be looking for me. I've not left you, but I want you to still be looking for me at all times. Because I may be ahead of you, and I may be beside you, and I may be behind you to catch you when you fall. But he's always right there. And Lord knows I want to be more like that little kid. We should all want that, especially now in a time when the world is just falling all to pieces. Who do we have if we don't have the Lord? Amen? We should be like that little kid. Yes, that's right. As I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night I'm praying 
praying for assurance Everything's gonna be alright Lord, I see another battle Out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able And I'll go down in defeat And he said, do you remember where I brought you from Just take a look behind you And see how far you've come And every time you ask me Didn't I deliver you So why would you be thinking That I wouldn't see you through Didn't I walk on the water Seas. I spoke to the wind And it hushed and I gave you peace Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you Just so you wouldn't fall Didn't I leave all of heaven? Just to die for your sins I searched until I found you And I'll do it all again Now she's talking to her father In a house that was once a home She said, my bills are coming due, Lord Six days is not that long And then she hears a voice so still and low Says I've worked like this before I'll do this little thing, child And I'll give you so much more Didn't I walk on the water And I calm the raging sea I spoke to the wind and I gave you peace Didn't I run to your rescue Didn't I hear you when you called I walked right beside you Just so you wouldn't fall And didn't I leave all of heaven Just to die for your sins I searched until I found you I searched until I found you And I'll do it all again You know, he already went to the cross He did all he had to do for us, amen But he'll bless us over and over and over And be right there, amen Amen um, How many of y'all suffer from road rage? I hear a lot of uh-ohs, but I don't see no hands. I, I know the preacher sitting in the back kind of scanning. There you go. There's a hand. Yeah, there's some, I see some hands now. Pastor, they ain't holding them up high because what they're feeling is that you're liable to see all them road ragers out there. So you'll want to form a committee, appoint a room, and have a road rage seminar. Well, I'm going to sit right on the front row when you do that because I need it worse than anybody. Matter of fact, the guy that wrote this song called me up. He said, man, you know what? The last time I rode with you prompted a song, and I just can't sing, and I want you to sing. And I said, all right, so this is what he sent me. And listen what happened to this poor fella. I got that race car sound on this album so you'll know what it sounds like when you're riding with us up the interstate, like Mario Andretti's driving. I was sitting in a traffic jam, I was late for Sunday school. I was supposed to teach the class about the golden rule. When the guy behind me started acting crazy and blowing his horn, 
So I gave him one of those ugly looks like I wish he was never born. And it wasn't pretty, yo. Well, it didn't faze him. He's wearing a smile and blowed that horn some more. So I pitched a fit and yelled a bit, and he quit blowing that horn. Well, I was feeling pretty good about the way I shut that old boy up. Till I remembered the bumper sticker on the back of my old truck, and this is what it said. Honk, honk if you love Jesus. Twice if you go to church. Three more times if you want to go to heaven. How about a smile if you love the Lord? My, my, my. Well, the traffic started moving in not a minute too soon. Well, I was thinking about how I treated that boy and acted like a fool. I couldn't wait to get to the altar and the whole church met me there to pray. But when I got up, there he stood. He's the visiting preacher that day. Can you imagine that? Well, he had a divine inspiration and preached on the golden rule. You can imagine my perspiration when he was preaching to you know who. Well, the moral of this story is simple, don't you see? You got a Jesus sticker on the back of your car, be what you ought to be. Honk, honk if you love Jesus. Twice if you go to church. Three more times if you want to go to heaven. How about a smile if you love the Lord? See, now I suffer quite excessively from road rage. To the point that if somebody cuts me off in traffic, I want to pull that old truck over, scrape that sticker off the back, run up there and get them. But I ain't been able to do that lately because Nikki keeps taking all my scrapers. Honk, honk if you love Jesus. Twice if you go to church. Three more times if you want to go to heaven. How about a smile if you love the Lord? All right, sing it with us. Honk. Honk if you love Jesus Twice if you go to church Three more times if you want to go to heaven How about a smile if you love the Lord The Bible says do unto others as you'd have them do unto you That's the golden rule, y'all So if you've got a fish on the back, back of your car Well, I'm talking to you too And when you hear that sound, just wave at the fella. Got my own song wrote about me. I've had to give that to Jesus and just, all right, Lord, help me out with that one. So he has, he really has. He's taken a lot of rage, road rage out of me. I think he disconnected all the horns and everything. So that helps. And every now and then we're at a concert and there's this couple that'll come and we forget it every time. But they'll come and at that part where they're talking about the horns, they just start this little honking horn they've got out there. The one with the they got them little bubble. bicycle horns and they just, scrugger, <laughs> scrugger, scrugger. So he will not forget that. No, never. <laughs> Laughter is good for the soul, it right? It is that. Yes, it is. And uh, we need to laugh more and be, be happy and filled with joy, the joy of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to do the, uh, let's do, uh, we, we have no rhyme or reason up here, and it, when we do, the Lord changes it around, so we kind of just go with the flow. I don't really know what he's punching, but we just hit it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking about the, the two-pack thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many have had some things come on you, and you just feel like it's not stopping? I mean, it's little stuff. It could be a hangnail. It can be uh, a heartache. It could be anything that's going on. We all relate to we that. We all relate to yes. that. And uh, we were in the middle of a concert. It's uh, been a little while now because the Lord put this together some time ago. He, he literally moved our songs around as only he can do. Man can't do that. Chip might mess it up, but that's all right. <laughs> um, Amen to that. <laughs> and he lined these two songs up in a time when we were in the middle of a concert and his strap was breaking and the music was glitching and I couldn't remember words and everything was going on. And let me tell you, when you have Jesus in your heart, you have the power and the authority to call out that enemy yes, to stop hindering right. you from what God is trying exactly to get you to right. do. And we did. We stopped right then and we prayed because people could see very clearly that there was a struggle. We're not perfect and we don't try to be, but 
there was a struggle and they saw it. And so the Lord led us to do this song we're getting ready to do with you uh, we stopped, now. We stopped before that and prayed. Yes. We just stopped right in the middle of the service. Absolutely. We said, excuse us for just a second. Right. You know, we had said our prayer before that, but something was going on. There, right. there was one of them little workers of iniquity just up here pushing buttons and unplugging things, and it was crazy. And how many know that when you call on the name of Jesus, the enemy has to flee? Yes. And how many know that his workers of iniquity are right behind each other waiting to do something else to you? So how often should we be calling on the name of Jesus? All the time. All the time. Yes. Amen. You want to make somebody mad, you say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And so he put this song, uh, lined us up to do this song next. Chip just kind of hit it. And right behind it was a song that the Lord had given me called There's a Breakthrough Coming. Because when you're going through your trials, you have to hold on. Yes. You have to hold on. And we have Jesus to hold on to. Hold on tight. And we need to tell everybody about him so that they have that same opportunity. Yes, for salvation, because they want to know where their eternal home is going to be. But to get through this life all together, you have to hold on to Jesus. Amen? And when you're down there, and we all do it, or maybe I'm the only one, I'll well, see. That, and we're wallowing in the floor, and we're having our little pity party, and we're just going, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Well, that's not the same calling out to the Lord as, Lord, help me, Jesus. Yes. Oh, Jesus. With faith and knowing that he's going to be there to take care of it. That's a different kind when you're just wallowing. But you get up off that floor, you start seeing things change and happen, and you start looking, and there's a breakthrough that is coming for you, for you. And those things that you have been wallowing in and the things that you've prayed for because God's promises are real. And so you hold on and you watch God start to move and then your breakthrough comes in. Yeah. Amen. How many Amen. needs a breakthrough today? Amen. Ooh, I do. Ooh. Amen. You ask me how it is that I'm still standing You wonder how I made it through the storms Well, I can't boast of any special powers There's no secret, I just held on I held on till the storm was over I don't claim to be a hero And I don't have all the answers But I held on till the storm was over Not because I'm great, not because I'm good and not because I'm strong, I held on. I held on. I can see that things are finally happening. I've got blessings I can call my own And many times I wonder if I would make it While I was wandering I just kept holding on And I held on till the storm was over Good. 
hold on tight because there is a breakthrough coming. Well, there's a breakthrough coming. Yeah, there's a breakthrough coming. Coming up the road our way. Yeah, there's a breakthrough coming. Coming up the road our way. Ain't no devil gonna stop me. to the other side and old Pharaoh he was coming with his army deep and wide when they thought their life was over they had nothing left to do well Jesus showed up and made a way to see them through yeah there's a breakthrough coming well there's a breakthrough coming coming up the road I sick in bed but when the savior touched her well all that fever left he gave sight to the blind man made the lame to walk again he's the alpha and omega the beginning and the end and there's a breakthrough coming yeah there's a breakthrough coming coming up the road feeling sometimes that's in you that that you just like oh lord i need you so bad i need you so bad and you just hold on because you know that breakthrough is coming you know sometimes we do things that just you know we just we're complacent with things we get into a routine we get into a okay well you know i've got to get up in the morning and go to work i'll come home i'll eat supper i'll go out in the garage for a few minutes then i go to bed and after that routine gets set in with you, it just becomes your normal what you do, you know? And, and, and there's, there's nothing else but what you do. Well, I want to explain something to you about the what part of life. There's another little three-letter word I want to add in there, and that's the word why. Uh, let me get that. Uh, can we do that example that we did that one time? Okay. Sing, uh, sing the first verse of Amazing Grace for me. <clears throat> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That was awesome. Thank you. Did you see she did exactly what I asked her to do? Now, let me tell you, now let's do this. Sing it like you're having a Holy Ghost moment, like one of your kids just got saved. Sing it like you just got to the golden streets of heaven and here comes Jesus out you. How would that sound if you did Amazing Grace? I think it's going to be a little different. Well. <clears throat> Amazing Grace, how sweet. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That was a little different, won't it? You see the difference in when I ask her what to do, and then I put the why with it. Okay, this is why I want you to do it. You know, it's two totally different things. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to, unto the Lord, and do it not unto men. It's Colossians 3.23. Know your why. Know why you do things. It makes your what so much more important. Because we are all walking towards that purpose, and that is to let people see Christ in us. That's what we're working towards. God has, in the Great Commission, he's told us to go out and tell people about him. If I came up to somebody and said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go tell people about Jesus. Well, that's fine. We'll go knock on the door and, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. But if I tell you why I want them, you to go tell people about Jesus, it's to save them from a burning hell. It's to save, save their soul from torment, lifelong torment. The difference between your why and your what in, in your, your, your normal life is you could uh, uh, compare it to going to church. You know what you're going to do if I say, hey, you know, Anthony, what are you going to do next Sunday? Well, I'm going to church. Awesome, awesome. I get excited. I have real joy, not just emotional joy. I have real joy because anything given to me about the Lord or anything that I tell about I don't let the hype get me excited. I'm always excited about it. I have true joy. And I know he's going to church. But what if I ask him, why is he going to church? What would he tell me? I would hope he would tell me that, well, I'm going to church to be fed. I'm going to church because God has given our pastor a message. And I need that message when I walk out that door to carry it out into the battlefield. I need to go to church to see my friends. The Bible says don't forsake the gathering. And you know why that is? Because of friendship, because of brotherly love. God is love and compassion, and that's what he wants us to show each other. So we put that why to that what. It makes all the difference in the world. It's, it's like when you get go make your car payment. You can sit there and write that check. And sit there and complain about that $300 car payment. Man, this is just $300 out of my account. But why do you make that payment? You make that payment so that you can ride in a decent vehicle. So you can have air conditioner in the summertime and heat in the winter. And you can drive through the rain. That's why you make that car payment. That car should make you happy. That car should enhance your life. Uh, when you're going to go pay your light bill, it's the same thing. 
You could stand in line and gripe and complain. Your light bill's so high. It's so high, man. I just, I don't know how I'm going to pay it. Well, that's not a good witness standing in that line. When somebody else is standing in that line complaining about your light bill, you could tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, yeah, but you know what? That cold day you came in in the winter, you had hot water for a hot shower. You had lights so you could see when you went around. That's the why we pay our light bill. Not just we go pay it just because I know I need to pay it. Why we pay it is so that we have electricity, so that we can cook for our family. The why in our life enhances the what so much more. So when you walk into church, you know you're going to walk into church. That's the what I do. When you walk in the church, you say, Lord, why am I here today? What are you going to show me today? House, what are you going to show me today when I go home and turn my lights on because I've paid my electric bill? Car, it's raining outside. Will you please keep me dry till I get where I'm going? That's the why of life. Everywhere you go, Try to know the difference. Try to add that why in. Let's not be complacent as a church. Let's not get into a routine of what we do is just what we do. Enhance that every day with why we do what we do. Tell people why you go to church. Tell people why you pay your electric bill. It enhances everything that we do. Take the extra, extra step. Add the why to everything you do. It really makes such a difference. God has made us encouragers, and he gives us these things to speak when we go to the churches. We don't just come to sing. Singing's just a, a, a benefit, a bonus that God has given us and allowed us to do. We come to church to help mold the church, to help encourage the church to go out and do the things that normally you wouldn't think of. I remember a time in our ministry when we didn't think we were effective, so we were going to quit. We were just going to quit. We knew what we were doing. We were singing for God. We were trying to do it all ourselves. But when we found out why we were doing what we were doing, it made the biggest difference in the world. He made us encouragers. We found out why we were encouragers, and I'm going to tell you what. We picked up that towel and wiped the sweat off of us from where we threw the towel in to where God had us out ministering so much. It really does make a difference in your life.
There will come a day We all will face Things we wish never came The test results the loss Of time that's now long gone From ones we'll see someday Help me to wait patiently Knowing you have a plan for me Even when I feel the need to stray Lord, you are my shepherd your time, Lord. In your time, give me the faith to rest assured that you're right here by my side. And all things will work for thy good. According to your word, if we will wait, trust in you, Lord. It's in Trust in you, Lord. It's in, it's in your, your time. time. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hands than to be a king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread. have Jesus than anything this world affords today and I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. And I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true.
Always feel like this is such a short time to want to say so much about the Lord. Yes. But He's real and His promises are real. And I cannot tell you how important it is for you to have a close relationship yes. with Jesus our Lord. I also want to tell you that it is up to us, the believers, to go out and to tell others about him. This is not just a how many people can you get to come to church? How many people can you invite to revival? Let me tell you this right now, every Sunday is the perfect opportunity to have more people in the house of the Lord, amen. But revival is getting ready to start. It's already started today, I believe, Pastor, and probably the weeks before in preparation of it. But as revival comes on, literally tonight, there should be a room full of people wanting to know, what is this Jesus that you're talking about? so that people have the opportunity to have eternal life in heaven. I want you to think about your neighbors. I want you to think about your family. And I want you to think about your friends, people you don't even know, and invite them to come here for revival, for church, for Jesus because that's really the bottom line, is for Jesus. One of the first concerts we ever had, I had a whole pile of flyers. And I was downtown Richmond and I thought, well, I'm just gonna hand out some flyers. And I don't know how many of you remember the little commercial where there was a number over the people's head and that number was just steadily going down until somebody did something for them. Well, that's what I was feeling like because I had this big bundle of flyers and I'm going, who do I give it to, Lord? Who do I give it to? And every person that walked by, I finally heard his voice. He goes, there goes another one. There goes another one. There goes another one. It didn't matter who I invited. I was just supposed to invite them. It didn't have anything to do about it being our concert. It was about hearing the word of the Lord in the music and the message that's in the song. And that's what our lives should represent. We are a message for Christ. And we should be shining that glory everywhere that somebody looks at us and says, I want what you have. What, what, what's going on with you? And you lead them in to come and know him. And you don't just leave them. I've seen too many churches that say, oh, we had three or four saved today. And then next week they're not there, but nobody's following up about where are they? Or they have a hard time right after that because how many knows the enemy wants to attack you as soon as you try to do anything for the Lord? Anything. And we're supposed to be right there going, come on back in. Let me have this. Is, just hold on. He's still there. Let me show you what you do. And you got him to the word, to the word. And you got him in prayer. You tell him about faith. And you build that faith over and over and over until it's so strong that Goliath, that, that big giant himself would not scare you because Jesus is there with you. You're in the storm and you got a rocky boat. Oh Lord, aren't you worried that we're gonna die? Why would you worry? Jesus is in the boat, amen? He needs to be with us all the time. He loves us. He loves us so much and so unconditionally. And right now, we've heard him crying out in our ministry to cry out to people that it's more than just coming to church. It's more than just doing a bake sale or, or all of that is important, but it's telling everybody we can about Jesus because he is coming back. He, it, there is no doubt, he is coming back. 
and only a few shall enter in, the Bible says. So when you think about all those people in your life and you think about yourself, look inward. You know, because sometimes people think they went in the church and they got saved and they got baptized and they don't ever show up again. I mentioned that earlier because what are they doing for God? I mean, they just think it's a ticket to heaven sometimes and that's sad, but that's not what it is. There's more to it and we're supposed to be the more. So we're gonna sing this last song. Pastor, do you wanna come up? Um, and I just asked you right now, as you prepare for revival, if you're not saved and you don't know the Lord, I, I don't know your hearts, but God does, then please, please come and ask about Jesus. If you do know him and you're a believer, and you're coming to this revival tonight or you're coming to this church or you're looking for a church or you have a church and you're going back somewhere else outside these doors, put everything you've got at this altar and let the Lord help you through all of that, all of it, everything, he will help you. He'll see you through everything you could ever even imagine and more. He'll do it all again, he'll do it all again. As we sing this song, Pastor, um, if you have anybody that comes up, Lord, you know what to do. <laughs> but we'll pray with you afterwards if you want us to and, and um, just think about coming to the altar. It's hard to, to get up and come sometimes, but maybe you'll be the one that's bold enough to let somebody else come in behind you and they'll all say, well, they went, maybe I'll go. You know, don't wait. Time is now, amen. Would you stand? I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now. Than it's ever been I can almost hear trumpet As Gabriel sounds the call And at the midnight cry We'll be going home When Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then Jesus comes again I look around and I see prophecy fulfilling And the signs of the times They're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father As he says, son, go and get my children And at the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise. 
when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall Jesus comes again, and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again. Jesus comes again when Jesus comes again. Amen. All God's people said amen, right? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chip. Nikki, appreciate it. You blessed our hearts. Well, you've heard the gospel and song this morning, and a little while ago they said something about more people coming and filling the church, and the only way that's going to happen is, number one, if you come back, and number two, if you invite someone else. So we trust that we'll be able to put some more chairs up, come back tonight at 7 o'clock. We'll enjoy your coming and fellowshipping with us. We'll have a little bit more music. I think we have a couple of our teenagers that are going to be singing tonight, and, uh, and then we have the Word of God coming. As our revival begins with our preacher friend over here, and uh, God has laid something upon his heart, and I know God is going to bless us. So you come on back, and to be an encouragement to him, and to be an encouragement to one another as we come back. Now, just wait for a few moments until they're ready for us here, and when they're ready, we'll go through these doors, around, and come back that way through the tables, okay? I'm going to close in prayer, and... uh, uh, there was a fellow, one of our brothers, that were gonna, was going to be here tonight, was planning on it, and I just told that he's in the hospital. He has a problem, a blood issue, and his name is Elf Braxton. Some of you know him, so I'm also going to pray for him tonight. Heavenly Father, I just pray for you. I just pray that uh, you'll be with our brother Elf as he's in the hospital, that you'd give the uh, doctors and the caregivers the skill and the wisdom to know what to do. Uh, he's a man that has loved you and served you and so faithfully for so many years, Lord, and we ask you to be with him. We thank you for the ministry of Nikki and Chip, and we pray that you continue to be with them as they continue to travel and bless others throughout this country. We ask now, Lord, that you bless our fellowship, that you bless the meal that has been prepared before us, that it might serve our bodies, that our bodies might better serve thee, for we pray these things in your precious and holy name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.